on this first slide, you can see the core from our uh, our first hole into the uh, LM target. And this is disseminated sulfide blebs here with uh, calcopyrite, uh, pyrotite, and penlandite, which is harder to see. Uh, so nickel copper mineralization, this is what we would refer to as disseminated mineralization. And uh, we were quite thrilled to hit it in our very first drill hole on this target. Uh, it's a joint venture, as Eric mentioned, 51% uh, Bitterroot, 49% below exploration, which is a private company uh, out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. And uh, uh, they're, uh, they've been very supportive and uh, we're we're look, we're going to start drilling again uh, next week. Um, so uh, we're funded for about a million dollar program, half a million for Bitterroot, half a million for Below, and uh, it's going to be an exciting time. Um, of course, forward-looking statements. So uh, caveat emptor. Um, here's the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, uh, just the south side of Lake Superior. A uh, long history of mining in this area, copper mining in the Keweenaw Peninsula going back to the 1800s. Uh, there's some large iron ore mines operated by cliffs that have operated, well, various iron mines for over 150 years. And um, the Eagle Mine that was discovered in 2002 by Rio Tinto is only about 35 kilometers to the east of us. Um, this target that we're chasing at LM was initially drilled by Rio Tinto in 1995. They confirmed the presence of the right kind of rocks to host an eagle type deposit, but uh, ended up focusing their efforts more on eagle. For uh, So we were able to pick up this property uh, about five years ago. Uh, the logistics in the Upper Peninsula are excellent. As you can imagine, uh, we have uh, highways, uh, we're 600 kilometers from smelters in Sudbury. We have railroads, we have workforce, uh, relatively high unemployment. So our activities are, uh, uh, are generally welcome. Uh, the other deposit nearby that's worth noting is the Tamarack deposit of Rio Tinto over here in Minnesota. It's about 60 miles from Duluth. Um, it's, uh, it's a similar uh, type deposit, nickel copper, conduit hosted, and uh, uh, that's a good roadmap forward, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, so the target type, as I said, is conduit hosted nickel copper PGM in massive and semi-massive sulfide. So it's high grade. It's not necessarily large, but it's very high grade and very high value. Um, some examples of other successful nickel copper discoveries in the last decade or so. Sirius Resources found the Nova Bollinger deposit in Western Australia, and it was purchased for 1.8 billion six years ago by IGO, and it's now in production. Uh, Chalice Mining has been a huge market success also in Western Australia, um, with a, currently a $2.7 billion market cap, and uh, it's primarily a platinum palladium deposit that's really most of the value is there but they are seeing variable nickel and copper grades and it's the same type of deposit both of these were discovered uh under cover there's really no outcrop in that part of western australia very deep weathering very weak geochemical signatures so they were testing geophysical targets um, and i've uncovered uh previously unknown mafic ultra mafic uh deposits Eagle Mine was discovered in 2002, as I said earlier, and was purchased in 2013 for $325 million um, by Lundin Mining. They put another $400 million into completing construction. And uh, so call it a $725 million valuation uh, eight years ago. So uh, I suspect that would be over a billion today. The nice thing about Eagle is it's got high nickel grades and high copper grades. The platinum palladium uh, is, is a minor component of it, but uh, relatively high grade compared to these Australian deposits. And Talon Metals nearby, uh, also a blind deposit, no outcrop, just drilling geophysical targets, uh, one to 2% nickel, around 1% copper and uh, uh, some minor PGMs have been reported, but all they're drilling of 
date has been much higher grade material. So I expect these grades are gonna increase dramatically. And it's cur currently hosting a $380 million market cap for 60% of the project. So uh, these, are, these are the kind of valuations that we would hope to achieve uh, if, if we have success uh, going forward. Uh, our current market cap is about 11, 11 and a half million. Uh, just looking at the regional geology, a simplified map here. We're in our Kian Nice part of the Superior Province. This is a, a syncline here of lower Proterozoic uh, rocks. Most of them are graphitic, uh, loaded with sulfide in the lower fossum, this blue unit. Um, the Eagle Mine and Eagle East are Kiwanawan or much younger, 1100 million year old intrusions that have come through these sulfur bearing sediments. And this project that we're working on, the LM project, is in the Roland Lake District, previously known as the Lucemore Deposit. Uh, this area was drilled by Rio Tinto. Uh, there's a lot of smoke here, but they never uh, found uh, the, the, the target that they were looking for before they pulled out of Michigan due to budget constraints uh, uh, at Rio. Uh, looking at Eagle and Eagle East, this is Eagle East over here and Eagle, uh, there is a, an outcrop of favorable rocks here that uh, Rio Tinto was originally uh, testing. Uh, Eagle East is off to one side. There is a little outcrop of nickel uh, sulfide bearing uh, peridotite there, uh, but it wasn't particularly well mineralized with nickel and copper, but drilling under it, the discovery hole was 85 meters of massive sulfide. Um, that ran several percent nickel and copper. And here you've got a nice a nice deposit here, a nice compact ore body, 5 million tons of 2.9 nickel and two and a half copper. And Eagle East was discovered about uh, 10 years later as they continued drilling down this, uh, this intrusion, looking for the feeder. And what Eagle East sits here in a flat spot, we've got um, another subvolcanic intrusion here that fed this that's not in the slide. So magma came up, went horizontal, and then vertical again, probably in, went laterally, and then in a bit of a pothole here for Eagle. This thing has no roots, so that's why we think it might have come from uh, Eagle East. Anyway, this flat spot's very important because that's where the sulfides accumulate, and that's what we think we've discovered at uh, LM. Uh, the drill results that we have had so far um, uh, this was uh, hole seven, which is our best hole. We have an upper uh, disseminated zone running half to 1% nickel copper. There was a massive sulfide class within that that had very high grades, uh, which I'll show you in a second. And a basal semi-massive unit here, about three quarters of a meter of 5% nickel and just over 1% copper. So these semi-massive sulfides are very high grade and um, we think we're close to them based on our uh, intersection of disseminated sulfides. Here's just a, the same inter interval uh, eliminating the, the high grade class. So you're about 0.8 nickel, 0.8 copper, and 5% uh, in, uh, in the massive sulfide, sorry, 0 0.8, 0 0.8 here in the disseminated and 5% in the semi-massive sulfide and 1% copper. So gave us three and a half meters of one and a half nickel just under 1% copper. Uh, here's what some of this ore looks like, or I'm sorry, mineralization looks like. Um, Semi-massive here. Uh, this is the foot wall uh, sediments with uh, graphitic and in places uh, carrying pyrotite, which is a good sulfur source. Here's the disseminated mineralization with this massive sulfide rip-up class that we was transported from not too far away. Uh, modeling of the disseminated mineralization gave us grades for massive in the seven to eight percent nickel and copper range, and and this class here um, confirms that. So we know we're we're in the vicinity of something very high grade. Um, here's the last mineralized hole, the program hole ten. Uh, again, disseminated blebby mineralization above a basal semi-massive zone, and that ran. Uh, two and a half meters of just under 1% nickel and three quarters copper. Close up of the textures here, 
these are all on the website, by the way, so you're, they're easy to, to review. Um, the, the interesting thing that's happening here is it is very strongly elevation controlled. So uh, this is a view from above looking at the intrusion itself and what, where our drill holes have gone. A lot of them got out of the intrusion. It's a, more of a vertical pipe. Uh, and in the in the upper reaches, so we have been defining that the shape of this pipe, and our deepest holes that hit the basal contact where these red dots are are the ones that are best mineralized. Um, here's a cross section showing uh, most of or all of our drill holes. Here's the Rio, original Rio Tinto hole, and then our hole number one and ten here are one on top of each other, and you can see the mineralized intervals are down in the bottom 20 meters of the intrusion as we've intersected it. So we really need to target down low and it looks like it's open to the south for sure. Uh, if we look at just the bottom of that intrusion, you can see hole number one, the first uh, slide I showed you just under five meters at 0.6 nickel, 0.6 copper roughly. Uh, hole seven, our best interval that had the three quarters of a meters of semi-massive sulfide and the rip-up class of massive sulfide. And uh, over here, hole 10 that I showed you a minute ago, uh, slightly higher elevation. So uh, that's, I think, why the, the grade was a little bit lower and a little narrower. So very strong, these are 10 meter contours here. So uh, the bottom of the intrusion is, is mineralized and we've got increasing sulfide content and grade as we go south. Um, this is the uh, ground magnetic survey we did with some drilling superimposed. So we're focusing on the LM intrusion over here. The ground mag has shown us there's a, uh, uh, what looks like a potential conduit target here, about 600 meters long. And we have a couple of other targets as well um, that show up on airborne as well. So they're, they're off. We would like to test these as well this winter. Uh, the Eagle and Eagle East footprints are here at the same scale. So you can see that uh, you can fit a, a feature of these size uh, into, into the dimensions of, of, of these magnetic features. Um, initially, we're going to step out. Hole seven was the best intersection here. Um, so we'll be doing 50 to 75 meter step outs uh, and work our way south. And we also uh, hope to test some of these other uh, targets that are a little farther uh, away from where we're drilling right now. Uh, it's going to be probably start drilling uh, on the Memorial Day weekend. So in about a week and a bit, uh, we've got a budget of a million dollars for 15 to 20 holes or 6,000 meters. And we will continue to pursue land around where we're working and uh, consolidate our existing uh, ownership. Uh, Bitterroot has uh, just completed a financing. We have about a million and a half in working capital, half a million allocated to this project, half a million US, so about 600 Canadian allocated to the, to the LM project, uh, 80 million shares out and an 11 half a million market cap. We've got some projects in Nevada, some gold projects that are both permitted for drilling, but uh, are not quite ready geologically yet. So I think we will be focusing on trying to get those drilled later in the year. But for now, uh, our main focus will be on drilling LM. And I urge you to go to our website and have a look at our pre uh, slides uh, and uh, core photos. And if you have any other questions, I'm easy to find.